So, my name is Sartaj, uh, you can call me Taj. Um, I'm originally from Calcutta, right now in Bangalore. Um, I work as an innovation and strategy management sort of consultant. That's my day job and I'm involved in a couple of other things, uh, which are slightly more interesting and difficult to describe. I'm also a senior fellow of the Melton Foundation. Yeah. So, how did you connect uh, with the Melton Foundation? So, um, initially, uh, I just heard about it from an outreach program at my university. but uh, And that's how it initially began. So, I thought, okay, this sounds very interesting. Let's apply. Let's see what this is. One thing led to another. And although I was pretty convinced I would not be selected as a fellow because it's really competitive uh, in BMS, um, I did make it, and uh, yeah, that, that's how it started. Yeah, just a normal process. Didn't know much. Learned more and more on the way. Yeah. How many years are you with them now, and what happened through this time? Through this so, time? so it's been five years uh, with uh, the foundation, and a lot has happened. I would say, sea world, sea change, whatever. I would say. Um, the reason. <laughs> It's kind of difficult to describe. Now that I look back, I think each year was sort of exponential growth. But you never see the growth when you're in, in that process itself. You're trapped in that and you have that tunnel vision on. But I think essentially it was just about the people I met, the things I, I heard. It just expanded my mind. And expanded my mind to a point where I knew, okay, I'm only limited by what I think I'm limited by. So, you know, you aspire, what, what you aspire to be is what your limit is. So, yeah, that, that was a big, big deal for me, at least, to, to recognize that and then say, okay, every meeting, every encounter, every thing I hear, every seminar, every skill training, everything, all of that is leading and building to something. Maybe it's not apparent now, but it is slowly, but surely, you know, adding layers of nuance within my character, within my skill set. What does senior fellowship mean in, in comparison to junior? I mean, it's yeah. obviously that it follows a junior fellowship, yeah. but so, so, what it, are... so in that sense, uh, the, the Melton Foundation has a lifelong fellowship. The junior fellowship essentially means you're still an undergraduate when you uh, sign up for it. Uh, the senior fellowship simply means that you've sort of graduated and moved on, and hence it's, it's a less structured program. But it really opens up. So essentially you're saying, okay, now you have a certain skill set, we've trained you to a certain degree, and now essentially it's open-ended, you know? What, you're a responsible person, you've been through this, what do you want to achieve now? So they essentially, I, I see it as level 2.0, where they say this is like a canvas, what do you want to achieve using the foundation as, as a support network? Yeah. Do you have any plans, any specific plans? Uh, right now, actually, I want to give back in, in some ways if I can to the foundation. So it could be through maybe some mentoring or training or something of that sort. But besides that, I, I what I do really well, which is sort of connecting people and doing some partnership development. So I, I'm thinking of doing those things for the foundation and seeing if, they, if I can help in any way I can because I got so much back from them. Yeah. My last question would somehow uh, talk at the Youth of India. You just told me before that you are somehow involved in in the election coming up okay. next year right yeah uh, how would you describe the biggest challenges of indian youth okay the, the challenges specific the challenge okay i, I think And the the specific challenge we have is i think everyone believes in india uh, as a concept as an economy that everything is right fundamentally but just this this disenfranchisement and this distrust or mistrust which exists with the political system here and hence there's a, an apathy or a lethargy when it comes to our political landscape and we sort of take the back seat saying this is inherently and implicitly a, a corrupt system hence I want to step back and this, this can't be fixed because the machine is too big to be fixed. Um, I think th that is a big, big deal for most people because besides that everyone I know who's, 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 who would be in the youth category is concerned about, okay, how can we gain you know, core issues like education and, and infrastructure because we have seen more economic mobility than in the previous generation and our expectations are, I think, of a more global nature. And the idea is, okay, how can India now be of a global standard and how can we head towards that? And one thing which is blocking is is the political machinery and a couple of other things could be diversity and some other things yeah so 
Why did you decide to work for the political system if you are so fucked up with it? So, uh, essentially, the the idea would be if you can contribute. <laughs> so, essentially, the idea is if you can contribute in any way. So, I I still think it it maybe it can't be fixed on the on the macro scale, but you can still add those micro initiatives to see some betterment and some level. And the other thing is okay if you completely detach yourself and aren't part of it at all, then you've essentially given up your right to participate in any way. And once you give up your right, you're essentially accepting it. and that system ultimately will come back to bite you in some way because you've accepted it what is your vision of india for for india not of india but for india in what timeline though like up to you okay uh i would i would really think in the coming few decades so definitely within my lifetime i think india is going to be the biggest economy i i see that happening is going to overtake china us you know essentially that I see that happening. I also see a lot of big challenges when it comes to food security, water security. We just hit peak water, uh, so there will be a, a whole set of challenges. And I'm my vision is also that we will meet those challenges because I think the youth will get more involved. And at some point, it will be a tipping point where either maybe we will have our version of an indian spring perhaps i don't know if that's a good word to say it but essentially we need a more equitable i guess democracy because even though we are democracy it's it's an unjust democracy in many ways so i see that changing and uh, economically socially i'm expecting a lot of mobility in terms of people's lives being changed and and hence those challenges coming in terms of what what does it mean to be a farmer in the future uh what does it mean to be an engineer so that and i i'm also thinking that people move towards besides money move to a more fulfilled sort of life and we'll move into a more creative and collaborative economy compared to now which is an industrial or an agricultural and in some points maybe a creative economy yeah thank you okay <laughs>